everyone, this is Calimara here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my uploads, because it's been a hot minute since I've made a video, and sometimes my videos get suppressed, which I didn't think was a real thing until I actually started experiencing it, or maybe people just don't click on my videos as much, I don't know. But anyway, it has been a while since I touched on Miraculous Ladybug and a lot has happened in the series since I've been away from it. Season 5 came out and I did not watch it. I was already dealing with a stomach ulcer and I had a feeling that watching the new season would send me to the emergency unit, so I decided I was done with MLB for a while and I was gonna sit that one out. Although several people have pointed out to me that apparently they used my anti-ladybug society idea that I proposed in my Hawk Moth redesign video in one of their episodes. Which would be pretty cool if they did get that idea from me, but I wouldn't know because I haven't watched it. So go and watch it for me and tell me if it's true. But in this video, as you might have seen from the title and thumbnail, I will be redesigning Luca. He has been highly requested and like most of the characters in my redesigns has a lot of wasted potential. If you guys have been following my MLB series, I've been writing a bit of a storyline to go along with my redesigns. So if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, I highly recommend checking out my playlist to get caught up. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, Luca doesn't have as prominent a role in the main plot line of my rewrite as the other characters I've done so far, but he does still exist in the story, so I want to talk about where he fits into it. And of course, how I would style him if I were a character designer on Miraculous. I also want to address something from my previous video where I redesigned Master Fu. A lot of people in the comments were saying that it should have been Cat Noir who found Master Fu on his deathbed so they can properly say goodbye because I made him something of a father figure to Adrian. Well, my reasoning for having Marinette find him instead of Adrian is so that A, she's the one sent to find the miracle box and become the new guardian, and B, if he knows that Hawk Moth's minions were the ones that killed Master Fu, he never would have agreed to join forces with Hawk Moth. So I think, in an unwise decision, Ladybug hid Master Fu's death from Cat Noir. The reason she did this was because she doesn't know how he's going to handle it, and she's worried that his grief would result in a devastating cataclysm, the likes of what we see in Cat Blanc. Because although in my ideal rewrite, Cat Blanc never would have happened, Marinette would still know that Cat Noir's powers are closely tied to his emotions. So in her mind, it was for the greater good that he didn't know, and if he asked, she would tell him that Master Fu had gone away to see his homeland again. Which ironically makes her no different from Gabriel, the very foe she's fighting against. I think it's a delicious point of conflict, and I'll definitely explore that in a different video. But for now, let's talk about Luca. But before we dive into the topic, I'd like to give a shout out to Vograce for supporting my channel. Vograce is a professional product manufacturer and supplier that specializes in producing custom goods like keychains, stickers, notebooks, standees, pins, and more. If you're an artist looking for ways to manufacture your goods for an artist's alley or just merch in general, then Vograce is perfect for you. Vograce has a huge catalog of customizable wares you can choose from, and their products are all super high quality. I would know, because they sent me a sample pack and I was absolutely blown away by the variety and quality of the product samples I got. I received heaps of different sticker varieties, a standee, a character pillow cover, and tons of keychains with different materials and finishes. I was especially impressed with the standee and holographic keychains, but my absolute hands down favorite has to be this shaker keychain and their dangle keychain. I've never seen anything like it before and I absolutely love it and now I'm trying to imagine what kind of dangle keychains I can make. Everything looks and feels very high quality and the printing quality on all of them is absolutely flawless. One of the advantages of using Vograce is that all of the items are super customizable and you don't need to buy their products in bulk. 
You can order as little as a single item if you just want something for yourself, and they cost as little as $1 per item, maybe even less. But you can get discounts for purchasing bigger quantities. If you want to create an order, all you have to do is select the product you want, customize them to your liking, upload your artwork, choose the quantity, then add it to your cart. If you'd like to check out these samples for yourself before creating your own custom merch, you can actually order your own sample pack for $9.99. But Vograce also has a VIP subscription service where you can get a sample pack for free, as well as a ton of discounts for your future orders. Vograce is perfect for all your artist alley needs. And my subscribers get $5 off using the code calimara x Vograce dollar sign five before the 31st of December or by clicking the link in my description. So what are you waiting for? Go check out Vogue Race today. So let's start from the top. Luca Cofain is one of the supporting characters in Miraculous Ladybug, but he is a bit more important because not only is he the son of Jagged Stone, a very popular musician that the entirety of the main cast enjoy, he is also technically a love interest for Marinette. I say technically because we all know he's just a red herring so that the writers can act all coy and be like, is Marinette going to end up with Adrian? Oh, I don't know. But I'll get into that in more depth later on. For now, let's just focus on the redesign. There's actually not a lot of things I take issue with when it comes to Luca's design in the first place. But the few I do have, well, let's talk about that, shall we? Starting with, of course, his eyes. I'm sorry, but tell me that Luca doesn't look like dehydrated SpongeBob. They really did not render this guy at all. They said, yep, here's a mouth, here's a nose, he's got two eyes, and we're done. Wrap it up, guys, this model's ready. His model just isn't fitting for a character that's meant to be important in the development of the romance aspect of the story, which arguably is a huge component of it. To me, he just looks like he's meant to be a random background character that runs away when the villain attacks. He looks super uncanny and it's especially noticeable because we get a lot of close-up shots of him where those shortcomings are on full display. And the biggest contributor to that problem is definitely his lack of eyelashes. <laughs> Compare his eyes with how Adrian's eyes are rendered. The first thing I notice is that Adrian gets a dark outline around his entire eye which really makes them pop and gives the illusion of eyelashes whereas Luca only seems to get that at the bottom of his eyes, making it look like he has no top lashes whatsoever, like they were burned off in a freak flambe accident. Another design aspect they used for Adrian that I think makes him look less uncanny is that they gave him bigger irises and pupils, which reduced the amount of visible eye whites at the bottom and top of his irises. It makes him look both more approachable and expressive. Meanwhile, Luca's smaller irises smaller as in you can see more of the eye whites of his eyes at the bottom and top, it makes it look as though he's constantly bulging his eyes out to intimidate you, or worse, has exophthalmus, which I doubt was their intention. So I'm going to render his face a bit more and make him look worthy of an important character role. Some creative liberties I took was making his eyes sharper and more serpent-like, which is something they already try to do in the original design, but I guess I'm just going to exaggerate that a bit more, while giving him longer lower lashes as a reference to how his actual character model only has the bottom part of his eyes outlined. Luca also has a sharp V-shaped face that could cut you like a knife, so I'm definitely keeping that aspect in my redesign. I initially drew him in his original hairstyle, but it made him look too generic, I guess? Plus, the goal of my redesign was to make him look more up-to-date to current trends, so I looked around for more alternatives. But with his long lower lashes and V-shaped face, how could I not take inspiration from the iconic Kim Taehyung? Tae has a lot of incredible hairstyles that I think would fit Luca really well, but my mind immediately went to the wild mop he had while filming the first BTS in the soup, because it was a bit longer and had the same heavy fringes. Plus, adding waves to his hair makes it feel more reminiscent to snakes to me, which I think perfectly captures the look that his original hair was probably going for. 
But as far as outfits go, I genuinely think Luca has one of, if not the, best civilian attire. There isn't really anything I'd criticize about it, it actually holds up really well to current fashion trends. But to further distinguish my design from the original, I'll also be changing up his wardrobe to make it more of my own design, but still following the same style that he prefers. So as always, I looked up some outfit inspo on Pinterest. Luca has a certain duality to his character where on one hand, he's this skater, punk rocker, but at the same time, he's also a very chill, laid back person. He's got this soothing energy about him that I really like. If I close my eyes and don't look at him for too long. So I tried to find something that would look both laid back and punk at the same time. I usually have a good idea of components I want to incorporate and that usually helps me narrow down my options. In Luca's case, I definitely wanted to keep his hoodie because I think it's a unique piece of clothing to him and I found this ensemble that perfectly embodied the feel I was going for. It has a very casual, comfortable appearance that, at the same time, also feels punk thanks to elements such as the boots and accessories. Luca's character model is also very thin and lanky, so giving him looser fitting clothes will help add more bulk to his design. For Viperion, again, I really have nothing to complain about. I absolutely love his design. It's probably my favorite costume because it's so complex and detailed without looking goofy. It has scales and details of a snake's underbelly at the place where a real snake would have their underbelly. It perfectly reads a snake with just a single look. And honestly, Luca looks so much better as Viperion because his unsettling eyes are covered up by his mask, which is also very detailed without coming off as tacky. It just goes to show what the character designers are capable of, especially if you look at his 2D mock-up. The art is absolutely incredible, and yet, for some reason, it just translates so poorly to the 3D models, and I'm not sure if this is intentional or not. But let me know what you guys think of his Viperion suit. I personally love it, so I'm keeping it as it is. Of course, when talking about Viperion, I have to address the elephant in the room. His powers. Which, if you guys didn't know, has a serious overlap with the rabbit miraculous because they both have to do with time manipulation, but one is just way more overpowered and world-breaking. So if I were to change anything, I'd actually change the rabbit Miraculous's power because it would get rid of all the problems that the show has, like all the what-if filler episodes and time paradoxes. Plus, the main team really likes to use time travel as an easy cop-out for when they do something drastic without wanting to have to deal with the fallout or the consequences of said narratives and just undo it by the end of the episode. I personally think the Snake Miraculous handles time manipulation a lot better and is the far superior take on time travel because it limits itself to rewinding time and creating a closed time loop but within that time loop, the user can correct their actions and rewind as many times as they need to within a 5 minute limit, which means that the user also isn't able to create a permanent time loop. It's not able to change anything in the far past or take the user to the far future. It only allows them to optimize their actions in the present. I think it's a much more grounded take on time manipulation and it fits perfectly in the power scale of the Miraculous a lot better. It has very clear rules and limits, and it's not world-breaking like the Rabbit Miraculous is. But getting back to the design, someone in my Discord stream also suggested that I give Luca snake bites on top of his pierced ear, and while it was the perfect thematic addition, I was a bit apprehensive at first because I wasn't sure how appropriate it would be. But Luca is homeschooled, so he wouldn't really be violating any dress codes if he had them. Plus, it's definitely something he would get, so I ended up going for it and I think it actually looks really good. If you're interested in seeing me stream and making suggestions in real time, then go ahead and join my Discord server. The link is in my description. And that's pretty much it for his design components. Now, while his design issues are a fairly easy fix, Luca's problems lie primarily in his writing. As in, there isn't enough writing for him. 
He gets introduced as a potential love interest for Marinette, and we see him around here and there being led on and played, and despite how hard the writers try to convince us that he's a real threat to the Adrianette endgame, we all know better. He's about as threatening as Adrian's romantic rival as OG Chloe is to Marinette. Like, can we just stop? Literally every other line and symbolism in this show is about how Marinette and Adrian are soulmates and meant for each other. This is exactly like how Starco went down. We spend the entire series literally watching them fart around while the writers vehemently prevent them from getting together by pairing them up with other people and acting like Starco isn't the obvious clear endgame until the very last episode where they finally... No, no, they don't even get together. They say, hey, to each other. And it's implied that they know each other's feelings at that point and will officially become a couple. We don't even see that happen on screen. But seeing how they've been written throughout the entire show, they probably fart around some more with other people and it never happens. And Luca is Jackie. He's super chill and cool, but he's also just there. They really don't give him much to do except to be akumatized sometimes, but then that's what most of the supporting cast is for, so he's really not that special in that regard either. And I do apologize if I sound heated about this point, it's just always been a personal pet peeve of mine when a couple is so obviously meant to happen, yet the writer tries so hard to run around in circles to make it seem like it isn't. I, I just don't enjoy stories like that. Is exactly why I struggled to watch The Legend of Korra and why I dropped Siren's Lament way back in 2016-2017. I think the only time I didn't mind this kind of dynamic was in the Hunger Games trilogy between Gale, Katniss, and Peeta, and that's only because Katniss couldn't give a fuck about romance, so the book wasn't bogged down with Katniss constantly lamenting about not being able to choose between two hot boys, especially because it's written from her perspective. Maybe I'm just aromantic though, so <laughs> don't take my word for it. Meanwhile, Luca, Marinette, and Adrian's situation is very similar to how things went down in Twilight, where despite the huge divide between Team Jacob and Team Edward among the fans, Bella had always been Team Edward from the start. She saw Edward, in MLB's case, Adrian, immediately made up her mind that she wanted to be with him, and she stuck with it. Even when Jacob, in our case, Luca, got his glow up and tried putting the moves on her, Edward was the only one on her mind. And it's just annoying because what is Jacob even there for? Of course, Luca is nowhere near as creepy or pushy as Jacob is, but my theory is that the rivals are there just to show how desirable the main character is. Like, oh, Marinette could have pulled anyone she wanted. She could have been with this amazing, dreamy uh, rocker guy. But she chose Adrian. And yet, he doesn't reciprocate her feelings. What a fool. Because around the time Luca was introduced, the producers must have been aware of how poorly Marinette comes across to the audience. So they needed some way to convey that hey, this character is canonically perceived as extremely attractive and desirable, not at all creepy, obsessive, or annoying. Because you know what else Marinette and Adrian's relationship had in common with Bella and Edward? How obsessive, stalkerish, and codependent it is. But as I've said in my Alia video, how do you know she's not the main character? because she's in a stable, loving relationship, and the writers think that their audience will find that boring. Yes, because stalking, frustrating love squares, and superficial angst between characters who aren't even mutually interested in each other is so much more riveting. Honestly, I find it kind of funny that animated shows in the romance genre don't actually tell the story of a relationship, rather the pursuit of a relationship, and getting together with the love interest is the ending and not the start. To me, that's the same thing as reading a book that starts with a prologue and ends on the introduction. There are no other chapters, you just go straight to the epilogue where the characters are on their deathbed giving a brief recap of the story you never got to read. So that's the tea on that. 
I'm personally not a fan of writing in a character that's only meant to be a distraction from the main ship, and it's downright frustrating when that distraction ship is actually a lot more functional and healthy than the main ship. But you know they're not going to go with that option. It's like watching someone go down the path of destruction and there's nothing you can do but watch. And when I say distraction, I mean that the new love interest is introduced only for the sake of drama for the character involved in the relationship to mope over and does not teach them any lessons, help them come to new realizations, or help them grow as a person. It brings absolutely no value to the character development of said character. And the worst thing about it in MLB is that Luca has so much potential to do those things for Marinette. And yet they don't. Marinette is a very high-strung, hyperactive, neurotic character who is constantly overthinking and on the verge of a mental breakdown. Meanwhile, Luca is very soothing and relaxed, he has a positive outlook, takes things slow, and enjoys the little things in life. Marinette is very goal-oriented, while Luca enjoys the journey to the destination. They're actually more complementary to each other than Adrian and Marinette are. So even if they aren't endgame, they could have used him to help Marinette grow as a person and learn what a real, healthy relationship should be, how she could be a better partner for the other person in the relationship. And that's why I wouldn't change anything about Luca's personality or how he's currently written. I'd just like for him to have a bigger role and a bigger impact on Marinette as a character. And maybe he has already in season 5, I don't know. Go tell me in the comments how wrong I am, I guess. But to catch you up on my rewrite, or just to remind you in case you haven't seen it in a while, in this storyline, I made it so that Marinette's crush on Adrian is more of a facade to seem like a hopeless romantic because everyone around her over-romanticizes young love and it makes her feel more accepted by her peers. She's unsure of herself and is easily swayed by the people around her because she wants their acceptance, so she tries to please everyone. And one of the ways she does that is by going along with the notion that she has a crush on Adrian. It's a forced, insincere interest that she was peer pressured into, and in fear of losing her friendships, she never denies it and actively tries to pursue it, just in much more sensible ways. And the thing is, Marinette is young, and she's never experienced love before, so she doesn't know any better. Surely, if everyone else thinks that her feelings for Adrian are real, then it must be. And this is just what love feels like. My idea is that eventually she comes to get to know Adrian more as a person and falls in love with him for real down the line. But in the meanwhile, there is a lull there to develop Marinette's emotional maturity, and that's where Luca comes in. She meets Luca by chance, maybe at a Jagged Stone concert. They bump into each other and drop both their phones. They lean down and grab it, and they grab it at the same time and there's a brief pause when they catch sight of each other. They both get flustered and embarrassed, quickly apologizing to each other before grabbing their phones and retreating to their friends. After the concert, Marinette takes out her phone to let her parents know that she's on her way home, only to realize that she grabbed the wrong phone. She panics, not knowing what to do, but Alia suggests that she call her phone with the phone she has and arranged to meet up with the person who had her phone to meet up and trade their phones back. And that's exactly what they do. Maybe they arrange to meet the next day, and they trade their phones back. They introduce themselves to each other and go their separate ways. But now, she has his number in her phone, and we see her save him as a contact. In the following episode, Marinette is freaking out about something and wants to call Alia to talk about it. But in her call history, Luca's number is still at the top, so she calls him by mistake and doesn't realize until he answers the phone. She apologizes, of course, but he hears the panic in her tone and tells her it's okay, and that he doesn't mind listening if she needs someone to talk to. Marinette is hesitant, but because she has trouble saying no, she agrees to tell him what was bothering her and he gives her surprisingly good advice. He even made her feel more reassured by the end of it. 
After that, I imagine they start talking more through texts and calls. She enjoys talking to him and he always makes her feel calm and comfortable. Eventually, he asks her out on a date and she starts feeling butterflies for the first time. This was her first date. She meets up with him and they have a great time, though I imagine it gets interrupted because there's an Akuma attack. And with him, she starts to realize how different her two crushes feel and wonders if this is how it's supposed to be. He's a worldly guy and has a lot of great insights. They're both creative people and they support each other in their respective crafts. He helps her feel more confident in herself and to better regulate her emotions, helping her work through her anxiety and imposter syndrome, and she gives him more of a drive to improve himself and actually work towards his goals. Their relationship teaches her that it takes a lot for a relationship to work. He's patient and he gives her space, and she learns that she can't always be in control. Sometimes, she just has to trust him. They argue and disagree, but they're comfortable talking about everything with each other. Well, all but one thing. I imagine she does still choose Luca to wield the snake miraculous, but I think he actually relinquishes his miraculous prior to the attack on Cat Noir, which in my version was Volpina using her shape-shifting power to impersonate Ladybug and attack Cat Noir to destroy her reputation and his trust in her. So Luca gives up his miraculous before that, because he wasn't comfortable having such a big secret from his girlfriend. Obviously, Marinette, as Ladybug, is touched that Luca values her trust so much, but at the same time, it also fills her with guilt that she's kept her secret from him all that time. And that's why when they see each other again in their civilian forms, Marinette breaks up with him. Because in her mind, it isn't right for her to continuously lie and hide things from him when he'd been nothing but honest to her. And it's for his own safety now that things are getting intense with the anti-Ladybug Society and Hawkmoth's team. Luca is devastated, of course, and he doesn't understand why. Things were going so well. And all Marinette can tell him is that She's dealing with something she can't talk about, and she needs space to deal with it. And she promises that one day, when she's ready, she'll tell him everything. He eventually understands. He knows how distracted she can get and how she can disappear for hours on end without any word. And he accepts it and tells her that he'll be waiting. He'll be waiting if she wants to come back to him. But I'll leave it there. Should Marinette still end up with Adrian, or should she get back together with Luca? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate you taking the time to hear out my crazy ideas for a children's show. It really means a lot to me. I especially want to thank my lovely pond dwellers for supporting me. If you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my content, then join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on my social media. If you want to submit fan art, tag me on Twitter or Instagram. If you want to have a chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want to see more of my stories, check out my comic and my Wild World series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!